Hello, my name is Stiley Hayward. I would like to welcome you to the Blessed Hope Ministry. We are a King James Grounded Family Bible Study. These lessons are not to be a substitute for regular church attendance. Nightly, I direct my family through the Bible by chapter and verse. We request you to join us and to study from God and His Son, Jesus Christ. You may have permission to like, send, or encourage our studies with family or friends. Edification of what God has and what He desires in our life. Study to show thyself approved unto God. A workman that needs not to be ashamed, rightly divine the word of truth. You may use our studies, but I request that you do not abuse them. For YouTube videos, subscribe below for more videos. And place the thumbs up and leave a comment or email me. Thank you. Genesis chapter 42. Now when Jacob saw that there was corn in Egypt, and he got this by the caravans, by the nomads, people going back and forth, he'd be on the way to Egypt, he would hear, hey, there's corn. Jacob said to his sons, why do ye look one upon another? And it's like, I guess they're just, you know, they're just looking, right? here's news of corn, and Jacob's like, well, why are you standing here? We need it. Get going. And he said, Behold, I have heard that there is corn in Egypt. Get you down thither, and buy for us for, from thence, that we may live and not die. You know, we're running low here. So the famine has gone as far as to the land of Cana, where Jacob is. And Joseph's ten brethren went down to buy corn in Egypt. There were eleven. But Benjamin, Joseph's brother, Jacob sent him not with his brother, for he said, least preventure mischief befall him. And the thing that he loves the most, he's not going to give up. And there's also maybe another possibility. He doesn't trust his, his sons. After what happened to Joseph. And the sons of Israel came to buy corn among those that came for the famine was in the land of Canaan. So everybody's coming down to Egypt. And Joseph was governor. He governs. He rules. On the behalf. Of. Uh, of supreme authority. In the office of God. Over the land. And he it was that sold to all people of the land. And Joseph's brethren came and bowed down themselves before him with their faces to the earth. Let's go back to chapter 37, verse 7. Genesis 37, 7. For behold, we were binding sheaves, that's corn, in the field. And lo, my sheaf arose and stood upright. And behold, your sheaf stood round about. And made of saints to my sheep. They bowed down. That's Joseph's dream. Here it is. Here is the, the, the answer to Joseph's dream. Here is the prophecy. You're going to bow down before me. He dreamed of sheaves. And what are they coming for? They're coming for the product of the sheaves. The corn. And Joseph saw his brethren. And he knew them. But made himself strange unto them and spank roughly unto them and said unto them whence come ye and they said from the land of Cana to buy food spoke strange they did not understand Jesus when they came they had no comprehension of what Jesus said and there are times he spoke roughly to them the other day we had we were talking to people about you know how Jesus was talking about that uh, he spoke rough And Joseph knew his brethren, but his brethren knew him not. John 1, 11. He came unto his own, and his own received them not. Now here, the brethren come to Joseph. It's opposite. But they still didn't know who Joseph was. Why? Well, he's all decked out in Egyptian clothes. He's royalty now. 
He's completely opposite of what his brothers are. Sheep herders, cattle rustlers, working in the fields. And Joseph remembered the dreams which he dreamed of them. And said unto them, Ye are spies. To see the nakedness of the land ye are come. You want, how much food do we really have? They said, Nay, my lord. But to buy food are thy servants come. <laughs> thy servants. We are all one man's sons, Jacob. We are true men. Thy servants are no spies. He said unto them, Nay, but to see the nakedness of the land are ye come. He's giving them a hard time. And they said, Thy servants are twelve brethren, the sons of one man, Jacob, in the land of Canaan. And behold, the youngest is this day with our father. He's now told them about Benjamin. It's been over, what were we saying the other day? It was over, it's over 30 years, 37 years, if not more. He hasn't heard anything about his father. He hasn't heard anything about Benjamin. He hasn't heard anything of his brother. 37 years. Benjamin's still alive. The youngest is this day with our father, and one is not. Not what? Why can't they say death? Why can't they say he's dead? Because they know he's not dead. They know they sold him off. And when they say he is not, Joseph knows exactly what they're saying. And Joseph said unto them, That is it that I spake unto you, saying, Ye are spies. <laughs> Hereby you shall be proved. By the life of Pharaoh. Now that right there, in the context of what we're talking about, Joe, that would be, as the Lord liveth. Ye shall not go forth hence, except your youngest brother come hither. Uh-oh. He knows. As much as Jacob had loved for Rachel and himself, Joseph. He knows it's going to be a hard bargain to bring uh, Benjamin to them. Hmm? Yeah, he knows. It's almost like Joseph is thinking, you got to bring dad with you. And I would assume it shocked Joseph when they do bring Benjamin. Yeah. So, these guys, they're shaking in their boots now. You know what the charge of spy is? You're not coming home. You're not going back. Dad is not going to get his ten sons. I'm trying to think of the word. Treason. That's the word I'm thinking of. So. Send one of you. And let him fetch your brother. He's that brother. I want to see him. And he shall be kept in prison. That your words may be proved, whether there be any truth in you, or else by the by the life of Pharaoh, surely ye are spies. Now you know what Joseph knows for sure that he hasn't heard word. I know when you went back to Dad, I know you didn't tell him the truth. Like yeah, you told Dad that, and you don't know about the bloody coat or anything like that. You, we sold him a bunch of Israelites and we don't know what happened. No, you did not tell him that. And he has no idea what was said. But he's calling his brothers liars because they are. Who would sell his bro their brother out? Because of envy. And he remember he remembered the dreams. You guys already bowed down before me. Woohoo. You know what my next dream was? Dad's going to come and bow down before me. Now Joseph is relying on God. Yep, God's answering this. 37 years, if not more. My prayer, my my dream is happening. God is with me. And he's kind of excited too because I'm going to see. He said, I, I dreamed that I saw 11 sheep. There's only 10. 
he knows that Levith is his brother. And which would also look like that Joseph had a very good relationship with his brother. And which would also tell us that his other ten brothers did this all out of spite and envy as they did with Jesus Christ. There was no wrongness of Joseph, if I can say, as far as his brethren. It was them to him. So, he's going to put him in prison. And he put them all together into ward prison three days. <laughs> I had to go to prison. I'm going to put you guys in. And notice again the three days. <laughs> Why does that keep showing up? Three days. Of all the time, he had three days. And Joseph said unto them the third day, This do and live, for I fear God. And that is a very true statement. If you be true men, let one of your brethren be bound in the house in the prison. He's changed now. He was going to just send one back and keep the others in jail. But I'll keep one of you in jail. I'll send you rest back. All right? You know what Joseph thought about within three days? Let's see. There was 11 of us. And somebody didn't come home that afternoon. Okay? There's 10 of you right now. One of you ain't going home. That's exactly what happened with Joseph. Joseph did not go home with him. Now we're going to see it's going to be Simeon. He's not going home. <laughs> Jacob's going to be upset. I sent you guys out. You lost Joseph. I sent you guys out. You lost Simeon? And you dare to ask Benjamin to come? Again, I think Joseph's saying that, you know, in order to get food, everybody needs food. His father's got to come. But bring your youngest brother unto me. So shall your words be verified. And ye shall not die. And they did so. And they said one to another. We are very guilty. This is the conviction of the Holy Spirit on a sinner. Joseph knows the story, and they're just picking up on it. Oh, my. What did we just do? Their mind is recommended to a moment where one child did not come home to their father. We are really very guilty, very guilty concerning our brother, in that we saw the anguish of his soul when he besought us, and we were not here. We learned something else. That we didn't learn earlier. Joseph was pleading for mercy from his brothers. Please don't sell me. Please don't throw me in that pit. Come on, please. Let this be a joke. Mercy. Mercy. Come on. Please don't do this. The sons tell us that Joseph was in agony and tears. and He would not want to go. And probably as the Ishmael lights are going, he's probably, come on, guys, come on, let's just be a joke, come on. Don't do this to me. Give me my coat back and let's go home. That's something else we learned that we didn't read earlier. They are very guilty and they're professing that even the fact is that our brother pleaded with us, we didn't listen to him. That makes it even sadder. And we would not hear, therefore it is, I mean, therefore is this distress come about. We are reaping what we're sowing. That's what they're saying. What happened to Joseph has happened to all of us. And Reuben, the firstborn, answered them saying, Spank I not unto you? <laughs> told you so. Always one that says, I told you so. Saying, do not sin. Against the child. And ye would not hear. Therefore behold also his blood is required. And Reuben is saying he's dead. <laughs> we don't know what happened to him. We sold him but he's probably dead. So Jacob thinks 
Joseph is dead. Reuben is saying that Joseph is dead. We are very guilty this sin. And they knew not that Joseph understood them. For he spake unto them by an interpreter. He's listening to them and he's like, he's li he knows the language, he knows his brother. And he's like, well, okay. About time you guys repented. He turned himself about from them and wept. John 11.35, Jesus wept. Jesus wept over Jerusalem. When he weeps over Jerusalem, he's weeping over his, his brethren. And return to them again. So he takes off. He's crying. He's boohooing. Man, he's, oh man, my brothers want to get right. They love me. But I want to see Benjamin. Can I trust them with Benjamin as much as they were trusting with me? He doesn't want lip service. Return unto them again and commune, talk with them. And took from them Simeon. And bound him before their eyes. Put him in jail. Put him in cuffs. Now this is the opposite of Lazarus. Lazarus was set free. And he came. However he came out of that tomb. Wrapped up. And he was set free. And that's where Jesus went. It's remarkable how Lazarus will come out. But Simeon is the. Is the opposite of that. He's bound and put into a prison. And we don't, I don't know why they chose Simeon. Now, Simeon and Levi killed a bunch of men, but Levi's not mentioned. And he's there. And you can only, I'm going to say assumed, which assumed means you can throw it in a garbage can that Joseph and Simeon maybe had some, I don't know. And Joseph commanded to fill their sacks with corn. That's what they came from. They came to buy corn. And to restore every man's money into his sack. And to give them provisions for the way. And thus did he, did he unto them. Money can't buy your salvation and Jesus is not going to take your money. How's that? And they laid in their asses with the corn and departed thence. And as one one of them opened his sack to give his ass provender food in the end, there was no room for Jesus at the end. But there was room for the brethren during the taxation of Rome. To gather all the Jews together so Jesus could be born in the Bethlehem city where David grew up. Isn't that interesting? And Joseph is not here, so Joseph is not in the end. He espied his money. He saw his own oh money. What is this? You know, he thrusts it through the corn to get some to his to his donkey. And he's like, a coin? What? More coin? Uh oh, we in trouble. For behold, it was in his sack's mouth. And he said unto his brethren, My money is restored. And lo, it is even in my sack. And their heart failed them. And they were afraid, saying one to another, What is this that God has done unto us? Now, you, you, want, you want to play with the words here? You want to go any further? Who do they blame for putting the money in? God. Now they don't know it's Joseph, but when, if Joseph the greatest type of Jesus Christ, couldn't you run that verse, go back to the Joseph and say Joseph is God? Because Joseph's the one that did it. If you want to have fun with the Jehovah Witness. Joseph put it there, but they're blaming God. As since Genesis 3. Well, the woman you gave me, God. Well, that serpent gave you know. The blame game hasn't stopped. And they came unto Jacob their father, unto the land of Cana, and told him all that befell unto them, saying, The man, the man, not a man, 
the man. That's quite interesting. Who is the Lord of the land? Jesus Christ. Spank roughly to us. Jesus Christ. And took us for spies of the country. Don't go all the way. And we said unto him, We are true men. We are no spies. We be twelve brethren, sons of our father. One is not. Uh oh. They're telling the father, you know, we brought the coat that was for the blood and all that. Some animal got him. But now he's not. You mean you haven't got down that you have greatly sinned and that you, you are now being counted in the blood of Joseph that you have not repented to your father yet? The youngest is this day with our father in the land of Cana. And the man... The man, Christ Jesus, the Lord of the country, said unto us, Hereby shall I know that ye are true men. Leave one of your brethren here with me, and take food for the famine of your households, and be gone. Get out of here. Now Jacob looks at the boys like, yeah, one of them was missing. If this not happened before... Now, you, you, you see Jacob with these boys now? I, I, and they haven't told him that they want Benjamin to go. Oh, yeah. Bring your youngest brother unto me. Now they're going to tell him that. Then shall I know that ye are no spies, but that ye are true men. So will I deliver you your brother, Simeon, and ye shall traffic in the land. You bring your younger brother and you can come here all you want to get all the food you want. And it came to pass, as they emptied their, their sacks, that behold, every man's money, every every man's bundle of money was in his sack. And when both they and their father saw the bundles of money, they were afraid. When it came over here in verse number 27, it said, One of the men found in his sack the money. Now all the brothers are emptying their sacks to give to Jacob and the people saying, well, here, here's what we got. And as they're all opening the sacks and they're, they're taking the corn to store it, now they're finding all their money. And you know why they're afraid? Because not only were they being charged as spies, but now they're being charged as thieves. So, if they were to go back to Joseph in Egypt, they are thinking that they don't know what happened. Now they're thinking <coughs> the word's going to get out. We stole our money and the corn. We are in some big trouble. And we're, I'm going to lay something out, and you can throw this in the garbage can, okay? Absolutely, if this is wrong. <coughs> Excuse me. You don't have to believe it. I'm going to throw in my five cents here. Okay? Wouldn't it be funny, funny if every man's money that were in all those sacks was 30 pieces of silver? Wouldn't that just be quinky dinky that the amount that they sold Joseph is in these... I don't know. I've thought about that. If you were to add all that money, I don't know how much it is. Don't tell. That would be funny if it was 30. To add to that story even more, you sold Joseph for 30 pieces of silver. I mean, they already said this is a great sin and his blood be upon it. And can you imagine him counting it out? Oh, man, it's 30. This is actually, don't tell Dad, but that's exactly what we sold him for. That'd be interesting. But, you know, that that's off the wall by me. Y'all meant when it's me. And Jacob their father said unto them, Me have ye bereaved of my children. He's blaming them. Joseph is not, and Simeon is not. All right, we know Simeon is not dead. So Jacob's telling us, hey, he's not sure about Joseph. No one will say Joseph is dead. 
No proof, no body, yeah. So when they say Joseph is not, they're not saying he's dead because they don't know. Jacob has that little bit of maybe he's still alive. I don't know why he hasn't come home. And ye will take Benjamin away? All these things are against me. He's having a pity party now. Now remember, Rachel only had two children, and Rachel was the apple of Jacob's eye. Joseph was, woohoo, he was the child of all the children. And Reuben spake unto his father, saying, All right, can we go back to 35.22? Genesis 35.22. Let's look at this one. This is the wrong one to speak. 35.22. 35.22, And it came to pass when Israel dwelt in the land that Reuben went and lay with Bilhah, his father's concubine. Hi, Dad. You're going to protect me with your son? I can't protect you with my wife. This is the wrong one to step up. Slay my two sons if I bring him not to thee. Deliver him into my hand and I will bring him to thee again. Jacob's not buying it. No. And he said, what if it was that slay my two sons? Did you charge your father with murder? And he said, My son shall not go down with you. Not going. You got a note here just trying to see where it is. Do not go with you. I don't see where his note is. For his brother of Rachel is dead. Alright, he's not, he's dead. Jacob is messing with Lincoln because his, his son has not come home. He's gone. I don't know what happened to him. One moment he's, oh, he, I hope he's still alive. Hope, it's like the prodigal father. It's like, uh, is he still alive? Is he well? Is he coming home? He is left alone. Benjamin. His brother is gone. True blood of his mother is gone. If mischief befall him by the way in the which ye go, oh, let's see, I gave you Joseph, he's gone. I give you Simeon, he's gone. What are you going to do with this one? Can you imagine the guilt that these guys are feeling they just had with Joseph and now their own father doesn't trust them? Can you imagine, I don't know, but can you imagine Benjamin's there listening to all this? Can you imagine he's not, no, I ain't going with you guys. Because remember, Benjamin was there when they sold Joseph. These sons have messed up the entire family. I thought it said the 11, oh, no, oh. Well, the thing is right now is you got these ten sons. Nine sons. That means gone. We can track the number here. And Simeon's alive. Joseph, they don't know. He's alive. We know. And now they're calling for the next son of the beloved wife. I mean, look, ask yourself a question. If you were a parent in this, would you trust these, these sons of yours to take that one last son? And it's been proven, no, they're not responsible enough. If mischief befall him, by the way, whatever happens to him, then shall you bring my, then shall you bring down my gray hairs. So Jacob's got gray hairs. <laughs> With sorrow to the grave. Again, it's a pity party. You know, you know. And it's, we're left off at this moment. 
in this chapter. You're not going to take him. Because I don't trust you. And if I did let him go with you, you're going to kill me. You're going to kill me by a slow death. I will have nothing to remember Rachel by. And he, that would make the sons even angrier, of not angry, because they were angry with Joseph because of envy, because their father loved him the most. And Pilate tells us that's why Jesus Christ was delivered, because of envy. It got worse, it got worse, it got worse, it got bitterness, bitterness, bitterness. And it broke the whole family up. 